And good afternoon. We're back on Daring Live. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a minute. So much has happened since since we last spoke and since we were last in the same room to get virtual room. Argentina yeah. won the World Cup. That was nice. That was a big one. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big one. Who, from I, the guy who was in Buenos Aires when that happened. Yes, that was yeah. that was uh, interesting and fun as well. What was that? Ex what was the experience like? Because that's a whole different thing, right? Well, was, I mean, we don't want to get too deep into the to the actual game. It was quite the you know quite the quite the quite the game, and uh, so but uh, the entire city out on the street is a city of over 8 million, 9 million people. So yeah. about three quarters of the city or more or was out on the street right afterwards. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. And then, and then the, the, the derailed victory parade two days later was even yeah. more, <laughs> that more was, funny. That was something. That was something. But that was cool. That was cool. But uh, I hope you had a, a nice, a nice Christmas and a nice holiday season. Happy New Year and all that. And uh, Happy New Year to everybody watching at home. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, very excited to be here as always. Um, Julie and Alan, uh, Happy New Year in the chat. I'm just yeah. checking it out. Uh, all right. So today, this is the first one back. Uh, we closed down for a week, so we're just kind of finding our feet again on Deering Live and trying to remember how to do things. Um, but uh, let's have some fun. Michael J. Miles. Uh, he's a composer, musician, grew up in the heart of Chicago. Um, he's been on before. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, he's an electrifying performer, uh, educator, and bender of genres. And episode 66 of Daring Live, you can re-look at uh, on daringbangers.com slash daringlive. Well worth a watch. But today he returns and we welcome him back um, to demonstrate and teach us about the rhythmical versatility of the claw hammer banjo and how this style can be utilized to play many different genres of music. And trust me, we're going to get into some really cool genres here in just a second. Now, before we jump in, um, I should make a point. There is a point during the conversation where we will be discussing Latin rhythms in particular. Uh, and Michael's going to refer to a couple of things. Firstly, he's going to refer to a chart um that it will appear on the screen but if you're watching on a cell phone or maybe an ipad it's not going to look that clear so uh in just a second i'm going to drop a link into the chat uh where you can access that as a pdf download uh it's also in the youtube description the facebook description and on the actual Deering live page of this uh, episode also so feel free to grab that if you want to follow along or indeed if you are watching on a repeat version uh you can still grab it after the show also um, he also refers to an app that he uses, which I'm afraid uh, for all of your Android lovers, myself included, you can't have it. But if you have an Apple device, uh, you can get it. It's the Afro Latin drum machine app. And he'll talk about that a lot more during the uh, course of the show. So just a couple of pointers here. We're going to get into it. Um, so let's bring him in, Mr. Michael Miles. Michael, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thank you. So nice to be back. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody and good to see you guys again. Happy New Year from very cold but wonderful Chicago. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful it. day today. Beautiful day, fifty degrees. We're uh, we're uh, we're riding high for today. I love it. That's that's really warm for Chicago. <laughs> yeah, it is warm for January. Yeah. yeah, it is. I was in London in November and it was very mild there as well. So uh, I wasn't no complaining. No complaining. Uh, right. Um, do we want to invite uh, Mr. Miles to play a little tune? Open things up here. Go for it, yeah. I think so. All right. Let's have at it. Okay. Thank you. 
fantastic uh, hey michael good to see you all right nice to see you david yeah this was this was a great topic um when we we spoke about you know having you back on we right. wanted to do a you know, kind of a focused topic and and so often claw hammer banjo playing is is thought of as just playing in in four four time and it's it's great that how you can you can you know, go through and you can talk us through playing in all these different time signatures and playing in different genres with this. Well, it's a, like some people say, uh, you know, claw hammer is just a technique to a way to hit the strings. And it, uh, it implies no particular genre of, of, of music in, 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 from my perspective. I mean, for some it's very specific and they, and, and people adhere to that. And it's a, and it's, a, there's a beautiful old time, tradition um but i grew up in chicago and i and i was always listening to other kinds of music and then i taught myself to play and never really got entrenched in old time and so so i was drawn to these uh these different styles and 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 there was a record way way in the 70s uh <clears throat> the 1970s uh a melodic claw hammer banjo with a few uh a few of the you know fine players of the of the time who were some most of whom were still around and and that they played a lot of different things and I, from that i took permission to well if they can do all that you can do anything and and uh, and that opened a door for me just listening to that and, and seeing uh, what what they were what they were about and and how they were pushing the envelope somewhat so for example that that piece uh, that i just played that's called uh, courant it's a it's a composition of mine from um um, my American Bach recording, where it's a sweet with a suite for the Americas, and the courant is a French dance, and it's a it's a dance that um, in the Bach cello suites, Bach, Bach always has a courant, and those are the ones uh, that get the, oftentimes played the fastest. And what's so interesting about it is the courant is in three four time, and when we're you know in America, we think of the, the Tennessee waltz or something, and three four time means this. One, two, three, one, two, three. But for Bach and for courants, it's the the count is not one, two, three, it's one and two and three and one and two and three and and so you have this one and two and three and one and two and three and And if you're thinking Tennessee Waltz and trying to hear three four time in that, it's like Wow, I don't even hear it. And there's a, you know, there's a great uh, drummer that I worked with na uh, uh, named David Jennings, and he, when I played, when I first played it for him, he said, "What time signature is it?" You know, I said, I said "Well, it's three four time, believe it or not." It's and 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 what's what's interesting about it because Clawhammer is kind of binary. We like one and two and three and a lot more than one two three because it's uh, because. Uh, you know, there's the 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 ditty part of the bump ditty origins of of uh, you, you know Pete Seeger's uh, uh, mm -hmm. description of how to play that that wants it uh, uh, that you hit a string with your finger and then with your thumb and so so here that one and two and three and and it's a what's what's good about thinking that way in terms of turning it into a, a, a something the the Tennessee Walls. Uh, I was dancing with my daughter to that 
Tennessee Waltz. And you can hear one and two and three. And, and I can and I can keep that rhythm versus. And ideally, you know, uh, what's what's going to make any of those things musical is to is to mix them. So. You can hear that and one and two and three you know, and then and so so and so it's just something uh, something to to play with and and what I'd like to try uh, and talk about today is um, I mean I have lots of things I can play and just show what I do but to share uh, with uh, people who might be interested a little bit about my thought process and and some of the origins for w what you can do um, as as a as a teacher I uh, and, a, and a teacher of teachers I was always working for with people to try to present a you know present a process I mean I, you, we've all seen these amazing players who seem to breathe fire uh, and you think wow how did they <laughs> how did they do it and there's a friend of mine who's a phenomenal uh, guitarist who his line is hear it sing it play it and uh which he can do in a one second you know and uh and then turn around and out comes magic and and so what i like to share a little bit uh today is is a, a a process of how to get to some of those rhythms so um uh here's this uh so there's this app can i go on with the app and talk about yeah go, so, keep going yeah, yeah so is. i've used this uh, uh one of the things that I, you know, we all have uh, as, as players, we have our inner jukebox, you know, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, and I like to I would always tell uh, uh, s students that it's like, well, you know, as a musician, you're the sum of what you've heard, you know, so the more you hear, the richer you get. Well, if you only listen to one style or, or another, you don't, you, you know, you don't get the influence. And so um, now I've had the luxury of working with drummers from all over the world from india from puerto rico from brazil from from and uh, uh, uh the, the caribbean and and so i i've i've tried to ink learn those rhythms but if there's there are rhythms that they that they play with one another that's not really in my inner jute box you know i don't i can't like necessarily uh come up with a puerto rican rhythm off the top of my head and so <laughs> So I found this handy app um, called, and it's called the Afro Latin Drum Machine. And uh, there's a free one and a $15 one. And this has been a really interesting because I'm going to play, I'm going to play one rhythm from it. This is called the Dominicana Merengue. Um, and uh, I'm going to put it by the microphone here so you can hear it. Now, if I were to go to pick up my banjo to play, a rhythm like that wouldn't necessarily come to mind. And it's like, but, but if, if I wanted to expand my playing, it's like, well, how could I, how could I get something like that? Well, uh, one of the ways you can is to uh, get the app and then, and then you join the band and here's your sound. Uh, you just mute the strings and that app, uh, I mean, that rhythm, the, the merengue is, uh, uh, it, we're going to divide every beat of four beats into 16th notes. So if you did that, um, you'd count them one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and, and it's useful to say the rhythm. If you say the rhythm, you can play the rhythm and it's on this, it's the first line of this handout and it, and the count for this one is one and a two and a three and a four E and a one and a two and a three and a four E and a, so I say that. And now I play it. And it's here's a and I'm just a one and a two and a three and a four e and a and the four e and as that's the double thumbing business. Uh, but the others are just uh, the one and a two and a three and a, those are all just like regular old bump ditty. But And then if I um, yes, so if I stop you right there, you're essentially yes. doing bringing it to claw hammer terms. You're kind of doing bump diddy bump diddy bump diddy then the forienda. And then forienda, yeah, right. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes right. I want to bring in the the claw hammer vocabulary there. That's a, a critical thing. So if I play them and if I play the app, 
and say it. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. And you can so so yeah. now, now you have the beginnings of something new, and and uh, on, on this on the on the handout, if I were to take it to, uh, I'll just make up a little melody. One, You can hear that one and a two and a three and a yeah. four and and you can and what's cool about it is it, you know it's it's you, you can make up your own i'm in double c tuning by the way uh just so you know um do it again and i'll, I'll count along okay uh here comes one two one two three and one and a two and a three one and a two and a three and a four and a bump diddy bump diddy bump diddy four and a bump diddy bump diddy bump diddy four and a there you go one and a two and a three and a four and a one bump diddy bump diddy it's easier to say one and a than bump diddy there's got too many um consonants, <laughs> consonants in there totally <laughs> so uh so there's there, there's this one there's now there's a uh, now there's a second one uh here that one that one is called uh merengue uh and here's one called uh, uh, uh pompiche and uh uh and it Uh, and if I were to join the band, you can still hear that. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to call this one one E and a two E and a three and a four E end. One e and a two e and a three and a four e and so you get uh 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 well with them guys one e and a two e and a three and a four e and one e and a two e and a three and a four e and one e and a two e and a three and a four e and so on the handout uh you could this is the top of page uh the bottom of page one of the two pages so that would sound if with the muted strings it sounds like this uh One e and a two e and a three and a four e and one e and a two e and a three and four e and. And you can you know you can mute the strings, and join the band. The other, uh, and and so then we get. Um, uh, now I'll play along. I'll play along with them one time. Uh, You get the okay. idea. And, and then, so, so yeah. real quickly, go through on the right hand what you're doing. So you're, do, wait, you're doing like a bump on the one, one, and uh, you're doing a bump ditty. On the, no, right. it's a, it's a, it's a, the first beat of the one E and a beat. And it's underneath uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the notes on the, on the sure. page are just X notes. So that sure. just mute the strings. And then underneath it, it says B T M T. So brush, thumb, finger, thumb. So that's like, and so, and my thumb, uh, my thumb's coming in on the, on the, on the, the fourth note of that one E and uh, on the, it's coming in on a inside string versus the fifth string. So there's one E and a. And you can see exactly the act, exact. Actually, I'm playing exactly what's there, which is a brush thumb, and then the second string, then the third string. So there's so one it's e right there. It's, it's brush thumb, thumb, and then a drop thumb thing. You yeah. know, single string right. with a drop thumb. Got it. And you do that. Um, it's actually the first measure is not right. The second measure is the one to look at. Um, uh, for some, there's a uh, other than it's flawless other than that but um 
<laughs> yeah, that the, the, those two measures should be the same. And the correct one is the second measure in that, uh, the very last measure of the, of, on the page of page one. So you get uh, one E and a two E and a three and a four E and like, So and so then and then but then what 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 it does is because those rhythms, both of them, are uh, one of many. I mean, there's there's hundreds of rhythms in this in this app and other apps uh, like it, uh, where you can listen to that. And, and you know the banjo the banjo is a drum, and we are drummers. You know, uh, we're holding it like this and playing on the strings. But your right hand, you know, you could think. Think of your right hand as, uh, you know, you are like the hands of a drummer. I've, I've played with tabla players, and it's amazing to watch tabla players. When you watch a tabla player play, it almost looks like their hand, they treat their hands almost the way a classical piano player does. There, there's lots of this finger motion. And so uh, we get this, uh, you know, we can get that groove. And so, so now uh, what I would t t t t to, uh, you know, turn it into not just some rhythmic exercise, but then something musical was to like okay i've got this rhythm one e and a two e and a three and a four e and that's the that's the pompice rhythm now uh, there is a one e and a two e and a three and a four e and right And so you can take, you know, you can take and spend a little time it's, and it might just suggest to you, uh, if, for those of you who like to write your own music, that and, and what I were where I where it really is interesting for me is that so oftentimes I when I want to write something new, I uh, my inner jukebox doesn't hold rhythms like Pompice and merengue. Uh, because, uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago listening to the radio and those things weren't there necessarily. But when I hear them like this on this app, or when I hear somebody else, a drummer playing those things, I can like, oh, let's see if I can join the band, mute the strings, come up with that rhythm. And then that rhythm can become the opening to a new composition, which is which is an, you know, an, ex an exciting thing. And the new composition then has, uh, you know, you don't have to stay true to that rhythm throughout and call it a Pompeche song or something, but it's like a, it can be a point of entry to new ex expressiveness. And, uh, and, and then you can, you can mix them uh, as well. One last thing with these. Um, so, so if I were to take the merengue rhythm, And mix it with a uh, pompiche rhythm. So here's merengue, and here's pompiche. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah. so then I put them together. Uh, And then I give them some notes. Uh... And you can go to town. So then it's a, it's then it's yeah. over to you. <laughs> it's like uh, here's some new new rhythms to play. They're cool as can be. There's un, there's unlimited uh, variations, and and you don't have to you don't have to necessarily stay true to it, but uh, be informed by it. And that's where you know. And what I like too is that there's uh, this is also the roots of the banjo. I mean, the banjo came you know uh to america through the caribbean and there's uh, uh on slave ships uh so you know oppressed people who who uh, you know who had this music in their ears what they brought you know i like to think of what did people bring 
uh, under those conditions. They brought their, they brought, had recipes in their heads. They had knowledge about how to build banjos, <laughs> and and that's uh, and that's that's how we got what we got. So um, anyway, that's a that's a that's a fun fun thing to explore. Yeah. I think that really stands out too, just from showing this, showing how you're making up these tunes by starting with the rhythm and then you add notes to it. That yeah. music is really, rhythm is really kind of the important part of the, of the three legs of, of, of music, you know, of, of rhythm, harmony, and, and, and melody. And that, that, you know, without a rhythm, rhythmic idea, it, it, it doesn't really happen. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I've heard it said uh, a little differently. There's that there's two elements of rhythm, uh, uh, two elements of music, melody and rhythm, and the most important one is rhythm, and there is no second. <laughs> so, so, I think it was probably a drummer who uh, who came up with that one, but, uh, but I find it I find it alluring yeah. because it is the it is the you know it's the rhythm that uh that uh, you know you've you've heard, everybody's heard like uh musicians who get up and they play a million miles an hour and it leaves you just untouched you know and then somebody gets up and plays slower but they've got a groove and they look like they mean it and all of a sudden <laughs> you know you're you know you get chills because it's because it, there's heart in there and and it's often on the shoulders of the rhythm that that happens so exactly uh, yeah um, I will, right. well, ne what's, what next? We've got a lot we're going through. So, what, what do you have next? Uh, let me play here. So, here's a here's a composition uh, that's a, a Cuban one called Guaracha, and uh, and the Guaracha rhythm is uh, it's a, it's it's a little simpler. It starts on the third beat. It's three and four and. So you hear this uh, three and four and one two ba ba three and four and one two ba. But, and you'll hear that uh, you'll hear that throughout. Uh, it goes like so.
Very nice. So again, you're counting your, you know, it starts on a pickup note on three and four and one, two, three. Yes. And, you know, like that. and there's so many, you know, there's so many, uh, 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 American songs, if I may use American, uh, that, that kind of start, you know, that they're, they're starting on one, you know, uh, uh, pop, pop songs often start, you know, there might be a pickup to the downbeat or something, but, but the, but the, the emphasis of all, you know, when it starts on three and four and one, two, that's such a distinct rhythm. And, and in fact, that rhythm, uh, and that idea, uh, is what drives, um, it's, it's the through line. It's what drives the whole drives the whole song. So you know, and I, uh, as I was, uh, you know, <laughs> I've written a lot of music with children, and uh, and uh, you know, down to kindergarten, kids, you know, it's like, well, what do we what do we do here uh, as composers? Even though you're six years old, you got to decide what is next, you know, <laughs> and so and so uh, and so it's it's by by taking taking. Uh, or rhythms like that that's a, it's a, you know it's a point of entry what's his name uh, richard rogers uh, who wrote the sound of music he was big on motifs uh, as a as a point of entry for composition he was not one uh, you know there's there are some great books uh, paul zalo wrote a book called uh, songwriters on songwriting interviews with great songwriters of the 20th century and and a lot of them say well how did you write that and uh, a lot of the answers often shift into well man i don't know man i'm just sitting there man and five minutes later the song is out i can't tell you how it happened and 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 i think well that's true uh but it doesn't ha if you want to learn it doesn't help what what richard rogers would say was uh create i'm going to give you five minutes maybe less create a motif you find a note you find another note and maybe a third note and play me your motif and uh that's and just the notes that will go together well and that once you have that motif it's a it's you know and it, it doesn't have to be you're not trying to finish the song you're not waiting for thunder to strike necessarily you just need a musical idea three notes And now, okay, there's my motif. I don't know if I like that one, but it, it's a start. It's a start, and you can you can you can take uh, uh, and it's just a point of entry. You take a motif and a rhythm, and all of a sudden, you know, if you're interested in well, how do you how do you, rather than waiting for lightning to strike that all of a sudden I'm going to have this great idea for a great song? It's like no, no, no. Richard Rogers, he he uh, he always looked like a banker to me, and he you know he'd go to work sit down at get there at the office at nine o'clock and sit down at the piano and write start writing motifs and try to come up with the new melodies and that's how that that's how that works or can work do you do do you do that a lot of the time and you write down little motifs and you save it on the voice memo or something like that oh oh yeah yeah i mean that's what's great about phones uh you know i'll get music you know uh, just an idea uh, of a of a of a song or a melody and I'll just sing it into the phone, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you know who I learned that from? For the first person ever told me they did that was uh, was uh, and now I'm going to draw a blank on his name. They, were, they had a band called Silly Wizard from from Ireland and Scotland. Uh, they were phenomenal. One brother played the accordion. One one brother played the fiddle. Uh, Cunningham, Phil Cunningham, and and his brother John Cunningham, and I think. No, I mean, and and uh, the the fiddler brother. That's what he said. I, you know, because they would write these amazing songs. Silly Wizard was the one of the greatest um, bands of their time in the in the seventies, eighties, uh, and and they. Uh, yeah, he said. Oh yeah, I go uh, I go walking down the beach. I have a little tape recorder. I just I sing diddly 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 do into the microphone. So I when I get these ideas, because because the notion that and you. Uh, you know, everybody's had this experience where you think, uh, "Oh man, uh, this what I'm playing on the what I'm playing right now sounds really good. I'll remember this tomorrow." Nah, tomorrow comes, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's miles away. You know, uh, oh, yeah. so um, yeah. totally. Anyway. We have a question from a viewer um, asking yeah. which finger on the right hand you're 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 playing with. Is oh. it your index or your middle finger? Yeah, I use my uh, I use my middle finger, and I have uh, one of these Fred Kelly picks on they call okay. fred kelly frailing pick or something uh, it, and those it's picks not, are plastic um, right 
yeah they're, they're made of plastic and then because I, I my fingernails would never grow and and then when they when they did grow before i had these picks and and before i was um using fake nails which i used for a long time uh i would just use the finger that had the most nail on it and most of the time that was my ring finger of all things you know <laughs> but it had the, it sounded better than the others because it had a better fingernail and then finally i had to get rid of the fingernail business and uh these are good it's not more um correct or anything to you know uh use middle finger or index finger whatever you what it's like the beautiful thing about the banjo is anarchy you can play whatever <laughs> play play whatever finger you like but i but i like that and the reason that i like it um is that i see uh that i my my hand touches and my fingers touch one another and it's it's that it's not the question of that finger it's this finger at the lead of my whole hand so that the when you when i go to play um there's a lot of you see this kind of up and down uh which microphone has that let me move this cable um this uh there's a lot of up and down motion happening here and so uh if i get that so you can see it a little better where i'm uh, uh, that uh, the up and down uh, business is that finger at the lead of my whole hand and what I like about uh, my middle finger and these other fingers behind it is that 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 with that I can control the dynamic I can be loud if I want I can take it to a whisper and still have the control that I like and so that's that's uh, that's um, that's my re reasoning for that so cool yeah all right, let's let's just keep moving forward. All right, uh, here is uh, I'm going to grab this other banjo. Shift gears all together. Here's this is my uh, uh, fretless minstrel banjo, and uh, one of the things that I've uh, that I like to do with this is uh, I found that all kinds of blues and rock and roll songs. Uh, uh, seem to sit nicely on this. I, I, I was hired by Hal Leonard to write a book about Bob Dylan, and uh, and I so it's interesting to me. You know, they want an instrumental version of Bob Dylan, and um, <laughs> and and so and they gave me a list of songs, and one of the songs was "Like a Rolling Stone," and 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 so uh, and Dylan, you know, when you listen to him sing, he oftentimes he's almost like making fun of his own voice as he's singing, and uh, and here's this song. Uh, it goes uh, um, so, and I'm supposed to render the melody, right? Uh, Once upon a time, you dress so fine through the bums of dime in your prime. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays right. It stays right yeah. on one note, you know. And uh, and so, what? How does that? How does that? How can that be interesting to hear? And uh, uh, and um, then I looked at the chord progression. The chord progression is amazing. That so uh, I'm in uh, I'm in. Um, G uh, tuning, it's double C relative, but it's uh, pitch is G. So, so the first chord is G with G the melody. Once upon a time, the second chord is A minor with G as the melody, making it like an A minor seventh. The third chord is B minor with G as the melody making it a, 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 G, a B minor sus chord. The fourth chord is uh, is C with G. And then finally, uh, 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 it gets to D. And uh, so... And I thought, wow, well, here's a... Well, how can I do this with claw hammer with this big bass sound because that's like my low g note that's like the low g on a guitar so i've got a big fat sound there it's enough to, and uh and here i'll just give you the chords on the downbeats and there comes a song uh Once upon a time, you dress so fine through the bums of dime in your prime. Didn't you? You thought they was all kidding you. You used to laugh about. 
everybody that was hanging out Now you don't talk so loud Now you don't seem so proud About having to be scrounging Your next meal How does it feel? To be without a home Like a complete unknown Like a rolling stone Gone to the finest school, all right Miss Lonely, but you know you only used to get Juiced in it Selling an alibi, staring at the vacuum of his eyes, and say, Do you wanna make a deal? How does it feel? How does it feel to be without a home? Like a complete unknown Like a rolling stone There's half of it. Uh, the uh, so the so the the right hand um, the right hand groove to that is uh, in, in, informed by the same idea of what we were doing with playing along with the drum machine, and that is to uh, to to uh, and I wouldn't do this with uh, guitar players as well. Who sometimes guitar players wanted to know about strumming patterns. What's the strumming pattern? for this song or that song and i was like there is no such strumming pattern the only song that's got a strumming pattern all the way through that i'm aware of is a horse with no name and you know you just can't make it through that whole, that whole stinking thing uh, uh with all due respect but the uh but to listen to any recording you know you're you've got everybody's got a collection of recordings or you can just go on spotify and play with anything put any recording on you're in the band and that's your sound you got you know you have a drum that you're playing with your right hand mute the strings uh and and i've got uh once upon a time you dress so fine two bums a dime in your pride didn't you And so the uh, the idea of trying to um, listen, you know, and uh, imagine what this could sound like, you know, because uh, and the t actually the the t band or tuning makes a difference. Uh, I find that the C tunings where I've got C in the bass works much better for me with solo stuff because that's the you know that's the, the this is double C relative, relatively speaking, this is a double C tuning, but it's double g so i so this is uh d g d g a for, for in my in my tuning but uh so that big fat bass note grounds things and it gets me a point of entry to to all of those there's a there's a well, i'll play a little bit of uh here's uh almond brothers um I 
I've got to run to keep from hiding And I'm bound to keep on riding And i got one more silver dollar But I'm not gonna let them catch me, no Not gonna let them catch the midnight rider And I don't own the clothes I'm wearing and the road goes on forever I got one more a silver dollar But I'm not gonna let them catch me, no Not gonna let them catch a midnight rider Comment from uh, from one of our listeners, Alan yeah. Jones. He says he does a Clawhammer version of "Times They Are Changing," and that works ah. really well. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, they're uh, they're 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 folk songs. You know, the times they are changing. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, and I, I've never seen Dylan with a banjo, um, uh, <laughs> but. But uh, nonetheless, his uh, you know uh, a lot of his songs they work they work great. Uh, for uh, we have another question here from yeah. Paolo Cor Coria Corini. Sorry, um, he's saying it's it's a double C relatively, but the pitch is G. Can you please explain that? Why is it so? Many thanks. Yeah. Uh, yes. So. Um, more banjo players would be familiar with double C tuning, which is which is the strings across. That's that's how my other banjo is was tuned. Our G from the fifth string is G, and then C G C D. And so this is that's it's relatively it's that same tuning, except it's tuned down to G, so that. The in, instead of a double C tuning, it's a, like a double G tuning. So my low string, instead of being C, is G. So then the five strings across are D, uh, D, G, D, G, A. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Uh, and so it's the same relative to double C, but it's but it's uh, you know down uh, down a fifth. Okay, and the yeah. same viewer also asks, it's kind of apropos for the, these songs, these last two songs a little bit, is uh, what do you think of Mr. Jerry Garcia? <laughs> oh, well, you know, his first <laughs> instrument was the banjo, uh, and, uh, and I, was a, I was a big uh, Grateful Dead 
fan, and in fact, uh, uh, I have uh, I have my um, tie dyed socks on. See that? So <laughs> so there. Uh, so I so I have a little. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time listening to listen to Jerry Garcia and the and the. What a band! They're fantastic. They were fantastic, and he and he and and that band, Olden in the Way, as well, was another one where they, you know, they took they took those songs like they recorded Wild Horses, beautiful, beautiful song where you know Jerry Garcia is playing Wild Horses on the banjo. You know, it's like how cool is that? Nobody had ever been doing that sort of thing. It was like, well, yes, you can because it's just a song, and what happens if you play it on the banjo? It might sound pretty good. You know, so uh, and uh, and life is short. Take risks and you know try try some of those things. It's it's fun to fun to do them. Here's another question that just came in from uh, your Sarah Miner. Uh, says you're fantastic. I'm trying to learn claw hammer. Um, sorry, some noise behind me. Uh, what materials would you recommend for a beginner? For a big be um, well, I th I think they. Uh, if you can find somebody around uh, where you live who who plays, that's that's helpful. There's lots of um, there's lots of f free stuff online. If you just like were to type in <clears throat> um, free claw hammer banjo lessons, <laughs> you, I'm not sure what you what you'd come up with, uh, but th there might be some. There are also these great uh, you know uh, subscription services now uh, uh, that are. Um, that have lots of different players showing lots of different things and kind of uh, finding the right teacher is it's ten, oftentimes it's you know you you have to have a a personal connection so you can you can go online and f you know look for paid um, lessons and see and then like listen to the samples and see well I kind of like this person or I like that person I don't have any. Uh, in particular that I recommend in the Wayback Machine in 1984, I do have a book called Teach Yourself to Play Clawhammer Banjo that came originally uh, with six one hour cassette tapes. Uh, so that's that's still available, but there's no video. So it's kind of helpful. You know, the the newer, the ones where you can actually see can can be a little uh, a little bit more uh, more helpful. But that's that's uh, that's that's one that I have. Most of my other stuff is um, not really for beginners, but that one was, you know, the guy said it was Kicking Mule Records, um, uh, which was a major folk publisher in the in the in the 70s and 80s. And they said, OK, imagine somebody gets a banjo, opens up their case, takes it out and opens up your book. And where did it begin? That? So that's where it, that's where that began. Um, uh, and then there are, you know, what's really fun too are these banjo camps. I teach at a lot of banjo camps. There's a Midwest banjo camp, depending on where you live. There's a banjo camp north in in Boston area, and there's a Sewanee one in North Florida, and uh, that are uh, great for. And they've got beginner tracks, so you can uh, you'd get m a, m a mountain of information at one of those weekends, and uh, would kickstart the whole affair for you. So there's a few ideas. Great, and one of the subscriptions, you mentioned a subscription service, uh, one that I know is Clawhammer Lessons on there is Peghead Nation. It's Peghead good. Nation, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Paolo, Paolo uh, has another question in here, says, is there anyone who used Clawhammer banjo in jazz? Um, well, I, I think that they're uh, not, not uh, not technically in a like a, j a jazz band per se. Uh, I mean, the er, the if you go to New Orleans and hear the the uh, D the Dixieland, um, the original Dixieland band in New Orleans, it's, they're using a four string banjo, and the four string banjo is the one that is driving the uh, has is the only the only chordal instrument in the band, and they were used banjos because they were loud. I think you can get jazz elements in uh, in in the in the banjo. In fact, I'll I'll play uh, I'll play this other one that I was gonna get to. This uh, talking about rhythm and jazz. So here's uh, here's um, uh, take five. <clears throat> and, I never, and so before I, you go into that, that the rhythm on this is what in take five. The rhythm in, uh, it's called take five because it's in five four time. So uh, the the rhythm um, and usually people don't count one two three four five. They tend to count 
one, two, three, one, two. Or, uh, and you can hear this rhythm. This is one and two and three and four, five, one and two and three and four. Whenever you hear that, that's the four and five. Um, and so, uh, and what I was going to say was, there are there are uh, banjo players getting more experimental with with claw hammer, who are uh, you know who have jazz elements, not necessarily playing jazz standards or not getting drafted into a, you know a band with a torch singer or something, but uh, but aspects of jazz can you know it's all it's almost it's almost like uh, the, the the opportunity for playing uh, jazz uh, ex exists there if you if you want to if you want to ex explore it it's not likely that the phone will ring if you say i'm a claw hammer banjo player looking for a jazz band who who's <laughs> who who wants one you know <laughs> but uh but nonetheless you can you can uh you know it's a tr it's a tricky road at doing it uh doing it trying to play folk music for goodness sake so um but uh, uh <clears throat> but nonetheless, you can you can incorporate elements of jazz, uh, and I think of it all. Uh, uh, who, who asked this question? What was his name? Paolo. 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 I, I think of it all, Paolo, as as it's all kind of it's all rhythm and melody, you know, and and uh, people put up fences. In, like I worked for a classical music organization, and they were big about classical music, and I was like, man, it's you know you should think we should just be talking about music not you know what you think is classical what what and and if i use the word jazz and i say yeah i like jazz and i'm thinking charlie parker and you're you hear my saying it and you're thinking frank sinatra you know we're in we're in different worlds uh so it's a big it's a big word and i, and I just think of uh i just think the what um has has the most power is just like well, let's we'll just talk about this rhythm and melody, and and there are these there are these influences from from so many uh, places, and that's and that's the and that's the upside of it, you know. Uh, so uh, here's take. Right. Uh,
Ah, there we go. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not hearing you. Uh, uh, my bad. I was, I was muted. Yeah, uh, very nicely. Yeah. You, so you count that again. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Sometimes. I mean, uh, uh, some people would call one, two, three, four, five, one. But when we get into uh, sevens and elevens and stuff like that, uh, those, those uh, odd meters, oftentimes um, it's, um, they, they, it originates from dance. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the dancers are not the players. <clears throat> they just think of these as longs and shorts. You know, so a, you know, uh, long step, short step, long, long, short. You know, and uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, and, uh, and and you know some of those um, <clears throat> Eastern European rhythms where it's where it's this folk dance. Everybody's out there, all they're all doing it. And everybody knows this dance. It happens to be in eleven. Uh, you know, and the and and the count is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. You know, or something. You know, and uh, and everybody's mm -hmm. got this and and you learn the dance. So then you then you learn. You know, and somebody says, well, you know, you're dancing at eleven. Is like, yeah, who cares? You know, I'm just dancing because I like this dance. You know, and and it's shorts and longs. That's it. And and so it's a way of thinking about it, a way of playing it, and yeah, stuff like that. Yes. So that but five four is a fun, it's a fun rhythm to play in and in a way in that song uh, it uh, you could play if you wanted to mess with it yourself uh, the first two chords I'm in C tuning so it's A minor three beats on A minor and then two beats on on G I'm sorry on E and I'm just playing a little like a little three string E chord at the fourth fret so A minor E. And and that you could you could play that rhythm and then you could like well what about what about five four time what you know it's like it's something to, it's something to mess with and sometimes sometimes too you can if from a composition standpoint you could uh, put um, you've got a composition that's going around in in four four time and then you put in four measures of five four time you know just as like a, a five four it can be complicated to do it but you could. Put a little piece in there and then go back and it's like, wow, what happened? You know, well, yeah, yeah. Add some, add some interest and it's and it's just fun thing to play around with. You know, as you like that kindergarten composer, it's like you you have to decide what's next. What's next? What are we gonna do? What's gonna happen in this piece and what do I wanna say with it? So Well uh, bringing it back to like how you say, you know, mix you can mix time signatures, bring it back to classic old time and claw hammer, there's you know, we the, the terminology used was, oh, this tune is crooked because there yeah. might be a, a bar of a bar. Of, you can count it either, you know, six, four, or a bar of four, four and a bar of two, four, you know, so they're mixing the time signatures just like you kind of did. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the, and the crooked, the crooked part of it is uh, often uh, in um, I just did these concerts with John McEwen of the Nitty Gritty Dirt Brand. It was the 50th anniversary of that record. And we did. Uh, and I had a class, the Will the Circle Be Unbroken Ensemble, and there was a song by Maybell Carter on that record, and uh, it's, uh, I'm going to draw a blank on the name right now, but uh, it, it's full of, cro it's very, very crooked. And, and, I, and I asked John and his bass player, Les, who was there, who was played on the record too, I said, did you guys have a chart for any of this? Nah no charts and and where did where did all those odd meters come from well maybell had just been listening to uh she'd been listening to mariachi music she spent some time in texas heard mariachi music and then she incorporated bits of it into this song and she just did it you know taking full liberty of I, Maybell Carter, get to decide what's next. This is what's next. I don't care if it's crooked or not. This is the way I like. This is the way I hear it. This is the way I like it. And that's the way it is. And boom, done. And and uh, and uh, and it was it was it was quite uh, tricky to learn because you know when you're trying to re reverse engineer those kind of things, how do we how do we get this? Well, everybody has to listen really closely, and that's and John said well that's what they did they just sat with her you get it until you get it right and uh, uh and nobody wrote anything down so. and, and for, for kind of sticking on that the theme a little bit for learning something that's kind of you know tricky uh rhythmically 
but there's a strong melody. Do you, do you kind of focus on learning the melody so you have the melody in your head so you don't fall off course? How do you how do you do that? Especially, you know, when there it's not charted out and you don't really know what's happening rhythmically, like in a crooked old time tune. When yeah, it's just kind of. Well, um, there's. Uh... They're not mutually exclusive. They never are. The rhythm, uh, uh, the melody, and the chord progression. Oftentimes, oftentimes, uh, um, one one of the points of entry that I can find with old time music because I don't have uh, I don't have a catalog of old time music in my head the way a lot of old time banjo players do. But I can sit with those guys and play, and I can hear the. I listen for the chords. And I start with uh -huh. the chords. If I can, if I can get the, you know, kind of hum the tune in my uh, uh, in, in my head, and and play the right chords, then then I'm closer. If it's like, uh, you know, uh, that you have a, a notion of it's two measures of the one chord and two measures of the four chord and two measures of the five chord and then back to one or whatever it does, that you ha you know you can you can play. You can play this much, uh, and then there's a melody on top of there, and the melody's all over the place. But I, but at least I have that that rhythm. And and oftentimes in these folk song traditional, they're tuneful, they're memorable. I mean, it's Darwinian that they're memorable. You know, like mm -hmm. Shady Grove. The reason people play Shady Grove still, it's only eight measures long, but it's this brilliant piece of music, <laughs> and it's beat out all the rest because uh, it gets remembered. Why does it get remembered? Because it's so. It's it's like this elegant simplicity that that uh, is enduring and uh, and so the and I um, so the chords are uh, really helpful. Using your voice is really helpful. You know, I, uh, to even even if you're not a singer, if you just you just hum it, you know, uh, it can it can really your voice becomes a conduit to your uh, playing it on the on the instrument. I worked with. Jimmy Keane, the great uh, Irish accordion player, and he was, he was amazing, you know, his encyclopedic collection of, of, of uh, tunes, and I taught him, I taught him one that he'd never heard before, and he learned, and he played it back for me, and he had, he had all these extra banjo player G, G notes in it that <laughs> I said, that sounds, you know, it sounds sort of funny on the accordion, because you put all of my, all, you know, and we uh, banjo players, we do like that G note and uh, play it play it uh, more uh, voraciously uh, and f uh, frequently than uh, most other instruments playing anything uh, and, so, and so and jimmy he had he had he had taken it in and just had it uh, you know because he had diddly 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 you know he had all those and he had those g, uh, g extra g notes in there all over the place so um so well anyway. michael this has been fantastic um we're, you know we've, we've come up to the top of the hour and uh we have a lot more that we could dig into so we, we need to do this again and just uh, and keep dive and keep diving deeper into this i think people yeah, really yeah, it'd be like fun it. to do that yeah yeah absolutely uh, do you have any um are there any questions jim i want to bring jamie back in is there anything we we missed in the questions Firstly, that was excellent. I enjoyed that. And uh, Jonathan and myself were having a discussion in the green room about how we count various measures uh, and whether we count the straight five or whether we break it up into different pieces or what, what do each of us do? It was interesting. It was, well, yeah, what's the synopsis? What's, what's, what's your way for, 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 for well, I'm uh, weird five, because four? I, I'm not classically trained like you guys are and have much less of a comprehension, but I tend to count five. On that one, I was counting five. But if it's a song where like the phrasing of the melody will play a role, then I'll I'll break. I'll just in my head, I naturally break it up into sections depending on what's going on there as well. So, but I do spend way too much time trying to count things that don't make sense in my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but oftentimes you can just you can just you can just feel it, and it's not it's yeah. not. But the the thing that uh, the counting part is it's it's important. It's what one of the you know I've worked with orchestras and orchestral players they're that's what they're doing when they're not playing they're counting <laughs> they're counting mm -hmm. they're look they're they're always counting because they need to know exactly where everything is all the time and so that the counting thing is uh is uh is critical and and it's and it's uh and, and i think the the one the twos and threes like 
um, maybe not so much with five, four time, but seven, uh, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. You know, that's a, that's a, a way of, uh, that, that is more, because uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is, tr is, is tr well, you, can, you can get five, okay, but seven, uh, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. Uh, uh, well, there's also okay. accents. I mean, it's not, it's not yes. as though it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, it, they're used usually in accent rhythmic pattern where it's usually broken down in threes and twos. Yes, or, right. or threes and it's, and the dancers, um, you know, it's longs and shorts, you know, uh, for that. Right, yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, take uh, five as boom, boom, ba dum, boom, 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 ba dum, boom, boom. Yes. One, two, three, and one, two. That, yeah. It's those. That's what uh, we, you know, we we hang our hats on that <laughs> part because mm -hmm. you can you can keep keep, keep track of things right. there. You know, yeah. Yeah. When you get Perfect. caught up, it it helps to yeah. know where that little other thing is. <laughs> The counting part's fun. Though. My my kids are really into music as well, and they, they listen to a lot. And I think my I think my son asked me quite recently, like, "Hey, Dad, why why are most songs four? And uh -huh. you know, and I was like, "Well, yeah, getting into the hard, you know, the, the easy to count, easy to the rhythmic, rhythm, excuse me, rhythmical feel, easy to dance to, etc." And then just went through a bunch of examples of some fives and some sevens of stuff from my relatively expensive collection. Mostly of heavy rock stuff, which is <laughs> progressive rock. So, so it's like trying to count to 15 at the same time. Yeah. Um, Prog rock likes their odd meters. They love odd meters and polyrhythms. And that's that's what I try and count and then fail miserably. Um, but uh, so now it's kind of a fun game where I can put on a song. Yeah, I won't make it too hard, but like see if they can pick up on on the on the meter, on the, on the count. For that. And uh, they get it most of the time. They do a good job. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> fun. That's good. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, so there is a wonderful lady in the chat named Brunella, ah. who I believe is a student of yours. Yes. Um, and she has been screaming the, to the world that people can sign up for workshops on Zoom via uh, the Old Town School of Music, obviously in Chicago, very famous uh, uh, venue as well. Um, can you tell us more about that, where people can sign up? Uh, yes. Um, so every Monday night, I have a one song workshop. Uh, that it's it's it, Mondays at six thirty. They can go to uh, oldtownschool.org. There's the website, uh, the Old Town School's website, and and just type in because uh, uh, there's a million things on there. Just type in my last name. My look, search under teacher, and you'll get that. Uh, the next, uh, so I've got five. The next five Mondays or so. Uh, next Monday is uh, we're going to learn. Um, uh, don't worry about a thing one love by bob marley uh, there you go. uh the week after that is hard times uh, uh stephen foster the after that is little martha by uh Dwayne allman after that is carolina in my mind by james taylor and and on february 20th t for texas uh, blue yodel number one by jimmy rogers so any of those <laughs> if you like any of those songs you or if you like all of them, uh, you can join in there. It's and you get the tablature, and uh, and I give you um, some of them. I have videos of, but I always videotape the class as a Zoom thing, so I do the Zoom video and make a copy of it, and everybody gets a copy of that to, so they can practice it at, at home. So that's perfect. That's, that's really really cool, and you're covering a pretty broad range of uh, of music genres there as well. Well, it's, it's yeah, you know, I'm kind of insatiable uh, musically, and <laughs> and, uh, and and it's so many songs, so little time. You know, there's uh, and it's the that possibility of like, well, can you do this? Can you play Take Five on the banjo? Can you play Little Martha on the banjo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. And it's what, what's been the challenge for you? Have so, someone ever said like, hey, can you play this song? And it's been kind of a lot more challenging to break down and convert into a claw hammer tune than maybe well, you expected <clears throat> i couldn't i don't i couldn't play uh you know the fretless banjo opens a door for the whole world of rhythm and blues in a uh, uh for me in a grander way in mm. that you know th the way that uh, like a rolling stone or midnight rider they come across um powerfully on that on that instrument and they don't come across uh, quite like that on 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 this one, so mm -hmm. so uh, that opens um, some doors for me. And there are some there are there are tunes that I've um, you know 
that I just don't like to play on the, you know, they just don't work on the, on the banjo yeah. so well, or, or some that, you know, it's, uh, uh, Ken Perlman is a really great banjo player. He does a lot of ragtime stuff and it like, uh, virtuosic that it's, 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 you know, no one on the planet can play w uh, what he does because he's, you know, he just digs into that stuff. Yeah. And so, um, there are, there are, there are tunes and there's there, but there's always more. So I'm just trying to find the, the ones, uh, the ones that I like. I've spent a lot of time in my, my, uh, what got me through the pandemic was playing Bach. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm about, I'm about to, uh, release a new record this year of the, um, it's called American Bach Revisited, where I record the first and third cello suites, uh, with the cello playing a continuo bass line. Um, and I did 25 years ago, I did the similar thing, uh, with a bass playing a bass line. But uh, but I've been practicing for 25 years and it's a little better, <laughs> and I like I like the I like the cello uh, the sound of the cello better than I like the the bass as much as I and I love the bass but the cello uh, is a little more it's up an octave we're shoulder to shoulder yeah. side by side it's a little yeah. more duet like and, and it's thrilling uh, to me and that'll be out in the next year sometime. Right, cool. Well, let let us know when that happens. We'd love to love to hear a bit more about it when uh, when it gets closer to the yeah. release. Yeah. So, fantastic well those are the things i had to cover thank you so so much dave anything uh or michael any more that you wanted to share and well just uh to thank uh jonathan and jamie and david and all my pals at uh, deering janet and greg and uh yeah. that's uh it's great to you know I, I i appreciate deeply your curiosity about my work because you know i've spent a lot of time doing this and uh you know oftentimes it's just me alone here in the basement and no <laughs> the same right, right. Is that you guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could just do like random live streams of just thoughts thoughts yeah. with michael j miles yeah, about yeah. just things right? Yeah, right and just like allow it to be like a uh, yeah. an avenue for you uh i'd be happy to do that no it's, it's been super informative it's been really really and i think a lot of the principles that you cover can probably be applied to music that isn't necessarily claw hammer as well um yeah. but it's really good to have it specific to that and allow people to kind of see the versatility of it, which was the whole point. And I think I heard you basically say that most people should probably have more than one banjo. I think that's what I heard you say. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the, the proper formula is, uh, you know, the number of banjos that you currently have, that we'll just call that X. And sure. the number that you should have is X plus one. Absolutely. <laughs> you know. It's a that's, great that's... formula. I, I feel a t-shirt coming up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. Michael, Michael, thank you so, so much uh, for your time today. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Did you want to play a little something on the way out just before you head out? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, here's a, um, this uh, Big Bill Brunzi uh, was at the Old Town School the night it was founded and uh, and I had a number of people. I never met Big Bill myself. That was 1957. But uh, he, but I'm, but I'm one degree away from him because I have a number of people who are friends with him. And so his here's uh, here's his uh, he recorded Hey Hey on the as a solo, a solo acoustic guitar. And then uh, Eric Clapton plays a version of Hey Hey on his on one of his records. That's and it's it's like a perfect uh, replica of what. Big Bill did, but uh, and here and but uh, uh, but and I heard it and thought, well, it should it should probably be on the banjo. Love it, you know, everybody. So. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon on the next episode of Deering Live. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Michael. Take it away. All right. Thank you.